Hey everyone, today we're going to be installing a big brake kick that is on the uh, Focus RS but will actually bolt up to the Focus ST with very few modifications. The biggest modification you're going to have to make are these 3mm spacers to fit this giant caliper underneath the stock OEM wheels. There may be also some modifications that you're going to have to make to your splash shield, but I will show you that when we get there. So this project, you're going to need a right and a left caliper. I'll provide all these part numbers in the description. You're going to need two rotors. You're going to need two new brake hoses. The brake hoses that are on the ST do not bolt up to these calipers. You'll need hardware, two of these. And if you want to fit these underneath the stock snowflake wheels, you'll need three millimeter wheel spacers. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure your reservoir is filled with brake fluid because we're going to be bleeding the brakes. You don't want this to run out. Don't go all the way because we're going to have to push the caliper, the old caliper, back in a little bit. And be very careful with brake fluid because it will eat. It'll eat your paint. Okay, thing you want to do is blow off the uh, the brake hose line here to get all the dirt out of there so you don't get any of that into your new uh, caliper. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to sp uh, spray some uh, penetrating oil on the uh, brake line and the hard line and the rubber line to make sure that we can get it um, uh, broke free. So you want to do it up there and then you're also going to want to do it down here. So the next thing you want to do is take off your brake hose bolt. I'll be careful with these because they can get rusty and they'll just snap right off. The next thing you want to do is turn your wheel to the left. Since we're looking on the left side, we want to get access to all the bolts. You're going to grab your caliper from the back and you're just going to pull a little bit. This is going to compress the piston. That should free it up enough so you can then take it off. The next thing you want to do is take off your caliper bracket bolts. They're on there pretty strong, so you're going to need something like an impact or a big breaker bar to get them off. When you take this last one off, the caliper is going to want to fall down, so just kind of hold on to it. And then you're going to take off the caliper and the bracket all in one. So the next thing you want to do is you want to have a caliper hanger or something to hang it. Because you're going to want to um, hang it out of the way and leave it connected to the uh, brake hose and the hard line. So we can lose as little amount of fluid as possible. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to have to get out our air hammer, air hammer because the rotor is um, rusted onto the hub. So this is um, a really good tool because it, it's going to do all the work for us. So we're going to use the air hammer with a, a hammerhead to knock on the rotor here, 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 and a little bit on the side, and that should free it up. The reason why I don't want to hit the back here with a hammer is because I'm going to be reusing these rotors <clears throat> when winter comes because I don't want to run these calipers in the winter uh, where we, we're at. We get a lot of uh, salt on the roads, and I just don't want to destroy them. So I'm going to be swapping these back and forth when winter comes with my uh, winter wheels and tires. Still on there pretty good. So we're going to hit it from the side.
Uh, it's broken loose. Should be able to just weld it right off. So the next thing I'm gonna do is see all this rust in here. I'm gonna use this. This is gonna be able to get me in past the studs because there's a hole, hole in it. This is for cleaning studs. So I'm gonna go around here to each one, uh, like so, and then clean, clean this face. The center ring doesn't matter as much as this flat spot over here. Then I'm gonna also come in here with this and, and clean the rest of it off. And then after all that, I'm gonna put some anti-seize on here. So now you see it all cleaned up. Got all the rust mostly gone. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to lather it with anti-seize. This way we can get them off easy again the next time. If you don't live in a rust belt, you might not actually have to do this step. Cleaning off the face also allows the rotor to sit flush with the flange of the hub. That way you won't get any vibrations. I also like to put some anti-seize in here. Just anything I can do to keep rust out of here. Water and salt, salt, especially salt that mixes with water just loves to sit in here. It just makes it really hard to work on your car. So the next thing we have to do, this uh, year focus, this is a 14, first part of the year. They switched the brakes uh, halfway through the year. I think it was in March, somewhere around then. And they got rid of this lip. This lip here is going to prevent us from putting the larger rotor on. Now I could come around here and just cut the lip off, uh, but I don't want to do that because I'm going to be putting on these uh, brakes back on for winter. So what I do have coming later is the larger um, dust shield or splash shield for the RS. So I'll be coming back here and taking this apart again. The cool thing is you don't have to take the hub off to get this off like most cars. There's just three bolts. The next step, we're going to put our rotor on. And then what you're going to want to do is take two lug nuts and thread them on to hold the rotor on there flush. I want to put the calipers on. And here you can see the size difference of the RS rotors compared to the Focus ST rotors. Now these rotors are in my car are the first part of the year. So these are, I believe, only 320 millimeter. These are 350 millimeter. Halfway through the year, they switched over to, I believe, a 230 millimeter rotor on the ST. So here's a new caliper. We're not going to put the brake pads in yet. We're just going to mount it here to the to the knuckle. So you're gonna come around here, you're gonna put the top one in first. So you can do it by hand. Then you're gonna let it sit there. You're gonna go in with your another one at the bottom. Lift up a little bit on it to get it off the callet rotor. And then put that on there like that. So the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna use our pneumatic torque wrench to tighten up these back bolts. These are torque ratings, torque rating very tight.
So these brake hoses only go on one way. They're going to go on like this. This washer is pinched to the banjo bolt, so it will not come off. This is how they come. This is how the Ford um, brake hoses come from the factory. We're going to leave this in here for now and keep dirt out. So you're going to come behind here and pull out the plug. And then you're just going to thread this in there. And there's a little block or tab back there. You want to butt it up against there. When you tighten it, what's going to happen is it's going to rotate in that direction anyways and tighten down. Make sure I was wrong about that. This one's going to want to rotate away from you. So put some pressure here when you tighten down. And then it should bite in. And then you shouldn't have any worries about it moving on you. Now you don't want to over tighten this. Just snug it up. Enough to where it crushes these um, crush washers. Next thing, we got to get the hose off of the line here. There's a clip here holding the rubber line to this bracket. So what you want to do first is just get a screwdriver and get in that hole and break it loose first. And then you kind of have to work them out. It's going to be a pain. You kind of wiggle them back and forth and then hit them at the same time. Eventually you're going to uncover a hole right in here, and then once you get that out, you should be able to just pry it out. I'm almost to it. Once you get that hole, all you gotta do is twist. And there it pops right up. Next thing you wanna do is spray some brake cleaner up in there. You don't want anything dirty getting in your brake line. And take your blow nozzle. Blow it off a little bit. So if you see on the end here, there's a lug. There's a big one on this side, and there's a there's a small one right here. There's corresponding notches in the front and in the back. You have to get those lined up in here when we're going to go put the the brake hose in here like this. The reason why we're doing it this way is the old caliper is still connected. We're gonna break it loose here and then we're gonna quickly swap over the lines. So the next thing before we take off the brake line, we're gonna set up our bleed system. What we're gonna be bleeding is just gravity bleeding it. Uh, since we're not forcing any air into the system, we should be able to just connect, connect up two hoses here and let it gravity bleed, and then we close off the system, and then we just do a pump bleed on the brake pedal. This way you don't have to mess around with any vacuum system or any pressure bleeding. Uh, this is a surefire way to do it very simple and so the next thing we need to do is set up that bleed so we need to take off our bleeder caps here they're kind of under tight so that's why I use a screwdriver just pop them up make sure you just make sure you don't uh, tear the rubber so this exposes our bleeder screws we're then just going to use a simple bleed two hoses into an old brake fluid container and we're going to just pop these on here this one goes back here just kind of wedge it back there 
Okay, so the reason why we have the pan here, when we break that open, this is gonna make sure the brake fluid is caught. Now what I like to do is just stick this back here. And that's going to divert the brake fluid right into the, the catch pen. So the next thing we gotta do is open these bleeders. Now they're not on very tight, they're 11 millimeter. We're opening both these up so as the brake fluid works its way into the caliper, it's just going to force that air out and gravity bleed. So now that we have that, we have that open, we're going to take out this little plunger here because we're going to put it onto our old brake line in a second. And then now we're going to break open the system. So now we're just going to break open our system. see fluid start to drip out. Don't be alarmed. That's supposed to happen. Remember, brake fluid is very corrosive. It's going to want, you want to keep it off of any paint. So we're going to let that drip there for a second because we're going to cap off this old line. And we're just gonna push it out of our way for now. Okay, so if you see here, there's a big tab in the back and there's a little tab up here. We're gonna have to line up this brake line, see how there's a big tab right here? We have to fit it into the back. You wanna make sure that this line is in here like that. And then you're going to bend it over and put it in place. Now it might not line up and fit in the hole right away. So you might have to get a pair of pliers to get it into the correct slots. And you see now it's flush. Now you can come up here with your brake line and screw it in. Now what you're going to start to see, once I tighten that down, you're going to see fluid coming in through here. Right now it's filling the brake hose. It's coming in through here, the banjo bolt, and it's starting to fill up these pockets inside the, the caliper. And the reason why I do it this way I lose as little brake fluid as possible. So now I come in here with my 11 millimeter wrench. And I'm going to snug it up. And it should pop out a little bit. So get that back in there. We're going to wipe off our excess brake fluid. And we're going to put this little clip back on. When it goes on one way, if you put it on the wrong way, it's not going to get tight. This is the wrong way. This is the right way. I'm just going to slide it up under there. Should have some pressure. A little hammer helps. Should be nice and snug once you get it in there. So now we can just get our old caliper out of the way. So what you can do here is you're going to come in here with a 17 millimeter and then get down on the bottom with your 11 and snug it up. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our retainer bolt. Don't over tighten these because it's just sheet metal. Now we need to close off the caliper because it's pretty much done gravity bleeding. 
what you want to look for is fluid has already started to come out here. So now we're just going to close it off until we do a pump bleed. So next thing we got to do is take off this cross bolt. So we can get our brake pads in. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to put our brake pads in now that we took that center cross bolt out. We're going to lube up where the pistons go. Make sure there's no noise. We're going to hit the sides here where the pads will be riding in the bore of the caliper. This is the inboard. The wear sensor always goes to the end. You're going to keep it tight against the rotor. And drop it in and just line it right up there with the rotor. You're gonna do that for your other one as well. Don't need a lot of this stuff, just enough to coat it. Don't get it on the surface of the brake pad, you wanna be able to stop. And just drop it in there on the other side, like so. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our hardware kit that has the anti-rattle and the pins that hold the uh, the pads in. This does not come, the pins do not come in any brake kit. So you have to order this pin set from Ford. So what you're going to do is this is going to set in here like this. You're going to come through here and you're going to hook around and it's going to fall in place like that. And you want these tabs to be right underneath these ears. Then you're going to do the same thing with the bottom one. You're going to come through like so until it comes through on this hole right here, like that. Now, the next thing you have to do is pound these in. So you're gonna get a rubber mallet. And you'll hear a snap when they're fully locked in position. Now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get your center bolt you're gonna lube up the center here a little bit because that's where the center bolt's gonna fall right in here. Get a pair of pliers, let them expand out, and there's a flat spot here, so that flat spot goes in between here and here. You're gonna start this, and you're gonna push. going to fall right in place. And you have to push on this spring. If you want to turn it. So you see a little bit crooked. So I'm going to put the bolt on the other side so I can push it back through a little bit and straighten it out. And then now the next thing, we're just going to tighten it up. Now these don't have to be very tight. That's what it takes. And then now you're all set up and ready to bleed. You never want to bleed the brakes um, with the pedal if you don't have the pads in because you'll end up just pushing the, the pistons out and pop them out of the bore. So now we're going to do the final bleed. This is going to involve having a person in the car who's going to pump the brakes and they're going to hold while we bleed the brakes. So first we're going to pump up the brakes. So I'm going to ask my assistant to 
do half pumps. You don't want to ever push the brake to the ground because you could damage the cups inside the master cylinder. So uh, pump and hold. Then let go. Pump and hold again. Then let go. Pump and hold again. Do it again. And now you're going to see the pad move out. Go ahead and push again. Let go, push. Let go, push. And you see it's starting to straighten up. Go ahead and let go and push again. Okay, let go. So now that we have the pistons out, we can go ahead and bleed. So go ahead and push and hold halfway. What you're going to see here is some air come out. Okay, let go. Push, hold. Okay, let go. Push and hold. See that air bubble, those air bubbles come out. Sometimes you can knock on the caliper to get the air loose. Okay, let go. Push and hold. Okay, let go. Now that we have the inboard one on, we're going to move to the outboard. Okay, let go. Push and hold. Okay, let go. Did not kind of have to loosen up any of the air. Okay, push. Okay, let go. Push. And now there's no more air bubbles. Okay, let go. Pump up the brake. Keep pumping, just pump. And then pump and press as hard as you can. So now we have them looking, pressing as hard as they can. We're just gonna feel around for leaks. And our Glove is staying dry, so we're good. So here we are looking at the, the pedals. Uh, so when you press on the brake pedal after you've bled the brakes, you should have a nice firm pedal. So if you go ahead and press on the pedal, just press as hard as you can, it should stop. And if you hold it, it should not go to the ground. It should be nice and firm. Okay, so we're gonna take off the lines now. So if you don't wanna get any brake fluid on, stuff a rag around it as you're pulling off these lines because there's going to be fluid left over in the lines. This is just a precaution to keep as much fluid under control. Kind of screw up on that one. And get our bleeder box out of the way. You want to get all the brake fluid off of the caliper. And then you want to spray it down. To get all the remaining brake fluid off. So the very last thing we're going to do, we're just going to make sure these are still tight before we put our bleeder caps back on. We don't want any brake fluid sneaking out. Also want to keep dirt out of there. So 
also a good idea to wipe down any brake fluid you might see. Keep our nice pretty blue calipers pretty and blue. Because this is the last time they'll be as pretty as they are. Okay, so the next thing we want to do we're going to take some paper towel, we're going to spray it down. And we're going to clean off our rotor face. We're going to get the front and the back. I want to leave this as clean as possible. See all that junk coming off there. I want this to be clean for when we go to seat the pads in. So one of the last things we're going to do is we're going to put some anti-seize on here because we're going to put our three millimeter spacer on, which is the thing that allows us to use our OEM wheels. And I'm putting this on because this is steel and our spacer is aluminum. Our wheels are aluminum too. Wheels I'm not concerned with. This is very thin. This could get seized on to the, the hat of the, the rotor very, very easily. So I'm going to put some more on here. I know this seems kind of like overkill, but I don't ever want to have a problem getting these wheels or spacers off. I do all my own work on my car, so this is more of a future planning step for me. So now that we have that all set, we can go ahead and put our wheel on. Now you're gonna have to be very careful of where the caliper's at. You don't have as much leeway in how much space you have between the wheel and the, uh, the uh, caliper now. So one of the last things you also want to remember to do is to check your brake fluid level. Uh, make sure it's up to the proper fill line and then put your reservoir cap back on. Our wheel is on and you have just enough clearance. That sound you hear is just the pads going against the, the rotor. We have ample room in here and in here. All because of that three millimeter spacer. Okay, so I'm going to torque up the wheels and then I'm going to take it for a test drive and uh, burnish in the pads. There's instructions in the brake pads that I got um, on the process to do that. I'm not going to show you that because that's dependent on the brake pad company that you go with. So if I show you one way, it could be different for you. So that concludes putting these Brembo rotors from the RS onto the Focus ST. I hope you liked this uh, informational video. If you liked it, hit subscribe. I'll be coming out with other videos for the Focus ST uh, and other general maintenance videos as well. Thanks for watching. So this is the um, old dust shield. You see that big lip right there on the left? That's what was hitting the uh, the rotor. So what I did is uh, I went and got a uh, dust shield for a 2017 Focus. So I can't see if you can see this. So right here, I had to notch it to get the fit. So. If you have a 2014 Focus with the smaller rotors on it, your stock OEM dust shield will not work with the Brembo's. Um, you can take it off or you can do it like what I did and just get a um, 2017 
uh, Focus ST dust shield. So here you go, you can see I crawled underneath the car better. This is where I notched it. I just filed this line. That's because this shield would hit the, the caliper. So just use a die grinder or a cutoff wheel or an angle grinder to get that line.